inspired by peak Lave's lead efficiency videos uh, that I will link below. Here's my take on um, how to open some bulbs in a way that leaves their domes intact and easy to put back on using tools that um, most have or can easily get. Uh, the point here is to make a bulb that uh, are closer to forever light and do not burn out in a year. But <coughs> before you go out and buy a bunch of bulbs, let me give you a warning. Before you buy many of some type, just first get one and check out how does it look inside. Uh, for example, this is one 9 watt LED bulb, but if you get it open, what you can see here is there is no, no access to any resistors. This modification is uh, most well based on changing or removing uh, resistors. Uh, for this bulb, it's all inside. You should pry these open and hope that this is glued on and that you can access anything inside there. And then that's a lot of work that you probably uh, don't want to do. Here is another example of an Osram bulb. We are modifying an Osram bulb, but here is one older one that I bought. And if you look inside this one, again, no access to anything. Uh, and everything is um, silicone down and very hard to get inside there to change anything. So don't just uh, go by the name and let's see that one YouTuber showed that Osram LED is way to go. You might not have locally the same type of uh, bulb, so you must check inside. Now, about getting inside, Peak Clave in his videos was crushing them down and then prying them open, but then you have very distorted bulb uh, dome and you can't put it back on easily. So what I recommend is, this is also Osram, uh, using, if you have the opening tool, and this is most easier, most easiest to use. If you don't have, then you probably have some carpet knife blade or you can get the carpet knife blade for no money. And you must be careful, don't cut yourself, so make sure that you uh, are very careful. You don't want to cut yourself open. These can do it very easily. Now, the point is to get behind this um, dome and the bottom side, and if you get deep, you can see that this blade is now well inside, and you can use the leverage to slowly pull and you can hear the silicone um, coming loose. I'll do it from several places and the bulb came loose. What I also recommend is marking before you take it off, marking a place on the bulb so you can line it up to put it back on because there is a lot of silicone glue inside and if you don't line it back up like like you took it off then it's hard to find a good place to put it back now this one has easily accessible resistors, but as you can see there is uh, this one that has one mega ohm and if it's so high then this is not a uh, resistor that uh, mm. regulates the power. But <coughs> what you're looking for is something with a value let's say close to 
below 100 ohms. So this one has, uh, what, what does it have? 22 ohms. So it's somewhere 20 and 30 range that they usually seem to have. Uh, now, since this is only with one resistor, not, this is not the easy modification one, because now you need to remove this or disable this by breaking the top uh, surface, the black surface on top of this is the resistor, resistor resistive surface and replacing it with something else. Now let me show you another bulb that is not so easy to uh, get open but is the easy so this is hard to get open but easy to modify this is easy to get open but hard to modify but you can uh, find uh, LEDs that do have two resistors in parallel for the power regulation so check your check what's available cheaply in your area these were discounted uh, right now and I got them both they both were sold for 1.5 euros a piece now let's show you this one <coughs> since this is a so much smaller package then it's by default it's very hard to do anything with it and the tolerance here is also very tight and I can't even get the blade between here so what we need to do is uh, carefully cut away a little bit of the plastic uh, in an angle and just don't cut yourself and if we cut away a little bit of the plastic here The bottom plastic is soft, the uh, glass plastic is a lot harder, not easy to cut. I'll try to help it with a little bit of alcohol. <laughs> it's a struggle. As you can see, this small one doesn't want to give up easily. What would help but I'm not doing right now is also heating it just by putting it um, in the socket and letting it run five minutes or something. Yeah it's quite difficult with those little blades maybe the longer one I'm not sure that that's better either. It's best to have this, this tool. It's a lot um, safer and better to work with. It just has the exact kind of thickness. So that you can press it between here. You can see it, it's quite a lot inside. And now I just press down and you can maybe here see. But the big ones uh, are a lot easier to open. I'm just messing with the small one to show you the other kind of um, resistor setup. Okay, it's loose now. But yeah, this tool that costs a dollar is very handy and it's flexible like this, but it doesn't break. Now let's mark this bad boy. And here you can see, like this one has the discharge, let's say discharge 
resistor under the capacitor that wasn't very straight it's under here here this is mega ohm one again but here you can see it has two parallel resistors let's check out the values the values are 82 and 62 so they are in parallel this makes uh, a shared uh, shared resistance of 34 and this bulb was initially uh, rated at 5.5 <coughs> now if you remove the 62 and leave the 82 one in then you will get uh, 2.1 watt bulb out of this if you leave the other one in you will get um, 2.8 watt and the removing is done by let me show you how i do this this is the simple uh, configuration and this is what you would e ideally look for because then you can just uh, pop the dome snip one resistor and it's a lot uh, more efficient lead right away now which one was which okay the bottom one is 82 so i will just use uh, snippers on this corner and that's enough because the top layer is now broken this black bar doesn't connect to this so this is disconnected you don't you don't need to break off the whole resistor just the top layer must be broken and now this is 2.1 watt lead that will not get as hot and thereby <coughs> doesn't burn out as fast or almost ever you can of course snip both off and just connect uh, one even bigger resistor over here to make it even lower wattage and it's pretty much 200 ohm resistor then it's around one watt and 100 gets you around two watt seems to be the same for many many leads so this is now 2.1 watt lead i will mark it on here here is example of another awesome one that i already modified to one watt by putting in 200 ohm resistor i will now show on this one how to make it into 2 watt by putting in a 100 ohm resistor because in this one my only choice is to replace it i can't just snip it off and there is nothing in parallel it wouldn't work i will snip it off and i will solder on a 100 ohm little resistor that i have here
and that's it done this will be now 2 watt bulb that um, will last many years this other one that I modified to 1 watt will hardly get even hot and running this <coughs> bulb all year long never turning it off will consume what was it around one euro worth of electricity in one year so but it's more than enough light for moving around in let's say next to your house or in the corridor or something like that I will include a clip of this one in the meet meter and right on the that is all